we have by now analyzed the second order system quite thoroughly now the prototype circuit we took was this okay what i'll do in this lesson is to show another kind of circuit and also show that the formulas we derived for instance for the damping and quality factor for this circuit are not applicable universally okay so you have to look at what the circuit is write down the differential equation for it and from that from the left hand side of it derive the natural frequency and quality factor okay let's see now in terms of vc the differential equation for this was lc second derivative of uh, vc plus rc the uh, first derivative of uh, vc plus vc equals vs okay now let me take another circuit which also has an inductor and a capacitor but just slightly differently arranged okay and i will still write the differential equation in terms of the capacitor voltage vc but as usual you could pick any other electrical variable like the current through the inductor or current through the resistor or voltage across the resistor and so on okay now the current here is c dvc by dt the voltage across this is vs minus vc okay so clearly the current through this is vs minus vc divided by r okay and the current through this is simply the difference between the current in the resistor and current through the capacitor in the given direction so this current il is vs minus vc divided by r minus c dvc by dt and we know that the voltage across the inductor which is the same as the voltage across the capacitor in this case okay so vc which is also the voltage across the inductor equals l times the time derivative of the inductor current okay so now we'll substitute that substitute this whole thing for il so vc is l times the time derivative of vs minus vc by r minus c dvc by dt okay now you differentiate the terms inside this here you will get a second derivative and so on and i will do all of that and finally arrange all the terms so that the variables are on the left hand side and the source is on the right hand side in fact i suggest that you try it out and compare it to what i have okay so if you do that you will get lc times the second derivative of vc plus l by r times the first derivative of vc plus vc equals l by r times dvs by dt okay now if you compare this equation to that one first of all the right hand side is different but that is not of much consequence that depends on where you apply the input and which variable you consider the output even if you consider just the natural response which you get by setting vs to 0 if you set vs to 0 here you get something if you set vs to 0 here you get something else you see that the first and third terms are the same but the term in the middle is different okay so this part here this is different from that one okay so what is the consequence of that let's see so if we had the circuit like this r l and c then the differential equation governing the natural response i'll ignore the source for now so vs equal 
okay now we can also uh, write this as you know as and when it is normalized like this this term here is 2 zeta omega n and this term here is omega n squared okay and we know these results already the natural frequency omega n is 1 over square root lc and the damping factor zeta is r by 2 square root c by l r with the alternative definition of the constant this is also equal to omega n by q and q is 1 over r square root l by c okay now let's look at the other kind of circuit and let me set Vs to 0 again and I will get the differential equation which is LC second derivative of Vc plus L by R first derivative of Vc plus Vc is 0 and normalizing it in the other manner we get So we get this again identifying this term with 2 zeta omega n or omega n by q and this with omega n square we easily see that the natural frequency is exactly the same it is 1 over square root lc but the quality factor now is r square root c by l and the damping factor zeta is 1 over 2 r square root l by c okay so the natural frequency is the same but the quality factor and damping factor have exactly the opposite kind of variation clearly in this circuit on the left side if you go on increasing r for a given l and c you will increase the damping factor or reduce the quality factor whereas in this if you go on increasing r in the circuit on the right side you will reduce the damping factor and increase the quality factor okay so what is the real difference between these two so like I said don't uh, let's say memorize the formula for the quality factor of this and use it in any RLC circuit right you will be dead wrong in this case for instance because the Q here is exactly the reciprocal of that one now these are two different kinds of circuits and these are not the only two types of uh, RLC circuits that you will see you can have uh, RLC circuits that fit into uh, neither this category nor that category okay but these two are some basic types and it's worthwhile knowing something about them if you set vs to 0 and draw the circuit with vs set to 0 we'll have r l and c okay so you have a single loop okay and in that single loop you have r l and c in series okay and if you do the same thing for the circuit on the right side and draw the circuit with vs set to 0 which means it's a short circuit we have r l and c in parallel okay there are only two nodes and r l c are in parallel this is the essential difference between these two circuits so this is known as a series RLC circuit and this is known as a parallel RLC circuit okay now why does the quality factor come out to be the opposite in these two cases so quality factor is some measure of quality of this circuit okay what is meant by quality in this case I won't go into the derivations but it's a measure of how much energy is stored versus how much energy is lost okay 
Now, in this case, in the circuit on the left side, you can see that at least in the extreme case, when R goes to 0, then you will just have L and C in parallel with each other. You can consider them to be in series in a loop or in parallel with each other. The point is, there is no loss at all and if you had some initial energy on the inductor, let us say, then it will never be lost. It will keep bouncing back between the inductor and the capacitor. Now, the exactly the same thing happens in the circuit on the right side if R is infinity. Okay, If R is infinity, then this is an open circuit. You just have L and C in parallel with each other and an initial energy on the inductor, for instance, will never be lost and it will be bouncing back between the inductor and the capacitor. Okay, So, R equals 0 turns this circuit into a lossless circuit. R equals infinity turns this circuit into a lossless circuit and the expression for the quality factor is consistent with that. Okay, So, if you look here, R equals 0 will make Q equals infinity. That means, that this is the best quality circuit you can ever have. And similarly, R equals infinity here will make Q equals infinity, again denoting the best quality. Okay, And you can similarly interpret the damping factor. If R equals 0, in this case, damping factor is 0, that means that the oscillations never cease. If you have some initial uh, energy in the inductor, let us say, it will go back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor. So, you measure either the inductor current or the capacitor voltage, it will be a sinusoid of constant amplitude, which never dies out. Okay. Similarly, here, exactly the same thing happens when R equals infinity. The damping factor will be 0. Okay. So, this, the circuit on the left side is known as a series RLC circuit and the circuit on the right side is known as a parallel RLC circuit. Now, it is important to interpret these things carefully. At least in this case, when the source is present, you can clearly see R, L and C in series. Okay, But such a naive uh, interpretation by looking at the circuit may not always be possible. In this case, at least when the source is present, it is not immediately obvious how R, L and C are in parallel, but if you set the source to 0, R, L and C are in parallel. So, that is what counts. You can have multiple sources in the circuit also, but when you set all the independent sources to 0, if the circuit reduces to a single loop with R, L and C in series, it is a series R, L C circuit. If it reduces to just two nodes with R, L and C in parallel, it is a parallel R, L C circuit. Okay. Now, because you can have multiple independent sources and you can split the components in any way, you can have a pretty confusing looking circuit that eventually reduce to either series R L C or parallel R L C. Okay. For instance, one example is this let us say. Now, what kind of circuit is it? It is not immediately obvious, but again if you set V s to 0, then looking the back this way, you have a single resistor R 1 parallel R 2. Okay, So, you have a single resistor, inductor and capacitor in series. So, this is a series R L C circuit. Okay and you can have other complicated combinations as well. Okay, And similarly, for a parallel R L C circuit, Now, this circuit can look uh, pretty complicated, but the point is, let us say I call this I s and I set this to 0, this becomes an open circuit and looking back this way, I will have some resistor R x and similarly, if I set this voltage source V s to 0, looking back this way, I will just have the parallel combination of these two. Okay, If I call this C 1 and C 2, so, eventually I have only R x, L and C 1 plus C 2 in parallel and this is a parallel R L C circuit. 
So the expression for Q follows R x square root of C by L in this case. Okay. So it's an important distinction, and if you are really confused about what the circuit is, first of all you reduce the sources to zero, and you should be able to tell whether it's series or parallel. And if you can't, you finally write the differential equation, normalize it properly, identify the terms, and find the quality factor. And you have to do that anyway because you can certainly have circuits with resistors, capacitors, and inductors, basically second-order circuits, which fit neither of the patterns I described. For instance. If I have even with Vs equal to zero, You neither have a single loop with R L and C in series, nor do you have just two nodes with R L and C in parallel. Okay. In this case, the only way is to write the differential equation. You pick some variable, let's say V C or I L, and write the differential equation. Group all the variables to the left side, normalize it properly, and find the damping factor and the natural frequency. Okay. So that's the only way to do it, okay? And once you do that, and once you do that, you will be able to uh, find the natural response and force response and all of that stuff, okay?